Sure. I'm not sure if we're supposed to. Should we? Do you want, you want us to? Sure. Hi, I'm Cynthia. I'm the marketing manager at Yellow Dog, and uh, we are a print and design studio in Northeast Denver. Hi, everyone. I'm Raina Olicker. for businesses that are implementing efficiency and sustainability. Hi, everyone. My name is Daniel Henderson. I am the CEO of Dream Solar, Dream Energy Solutions. We're a renewable energy company uh, based out of Colorado. Yeah, hi, everyone. David Shapiro. I'm at the Center for Health, Work, and Environment at the Colorado School of Public Health. And I talk to businesses every day about their health and safety programs for their workers. So looking forward to speaking with you all today, too. Well, <laughs> okay, our Zoom scout says better or sound. <clears throat> okay, so let's see if we can hear Andrea. Andrea. <coughs> Hi, can you hear me? Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> Good job, everybody. All right, well, my name is Andrea. I'm here with the Community Language Cooperative. I'm here because you guys today will be practicing language justice so that everybody in Zoom and there can speak and hear in the language of their heart or how they feel more comfortable expressing themselves. We're going to use simultaneous interpretation in English and Spanish. So for those of you who are on Zoom, once we turn on the interpretation after I'm done saying this message in Spanish, you're going to see a world map on the bottom of your screen, or if you're on your phone or tablet, you're going to see three little dots or where it says more, and there you're going to be able to select your language. If you are fully bilingual in English and Spanish, you don't need to select anything. You can just hear in the original language, and you can always speak in whichever of those two languages you feel like speaking. Um, I do ask that everybody who is in the room, when they are speaking, they need to be very close to the microphone. Otherwise, I won't be able to hear you and people on Zoom won't be able to hear you either. Um, do stretch your words when you're speaking. Speak a little bit slower than you would normally. And if you're going to read any content, please be mindful of your pace. We read a lot faster than we just talk naturally. So if you start speaking too fast, I'm going to turn on my camera and I'm going to make these signs. Just mean stretch your words. I'm probably going to be looking panicky because I can't catch up. So just be aware that that might happen. If I cannot hear you, I'm going to turn on my camera and I'm going to point to my headset. It means I can't hear you. Um, and if I hold my finger like this, it means please hold one second because either I need to catch up or I need to ask a question. If anybody has any questions about the interpretation, you can always ask it in the chat. I'm going to provide this message very quickly in Spanish and then we can begin. Hola a todos, mi nombre es Andrea, estoy aquí con la Community Language Cooperative. Estoy aquí porque ustedes están, van a participar en la justicia del lenguaje donde las personas puedan hablar y escuchar en el idioma de su corazón. Vamos a tener interpretación simultánea en inglés y en español y una vez prendamos la interpretación, tú vas a ver un mapa mundo en la parte inferior de tu pantalla donde vas a poder seleccionar tu idioma. O si estás en tu teléfono o tu tableta, vas a ver tres punticos o donde dice more. Ahí vas a poder seleccionar tu idioma. Te recomiendo que hables más despacio para que yo pueda interpretar todo correctamente y que siempre hables muy cerca a tu micrófono. Si tienes alguna pregunta, puedes hacerla en el chat. And thank you so much, everybody. We can begin interpretation now. Okay, so we're going to start the interpretation and then the recording at the same time. So we all have this. Um, in the interest of time, because we have a spectacular panel today, and I want to get right into it. So I'm going to just say thank you, everybody, for being here today. Thank you to all of our sponsors and all of our incredible partner organizations that help make this series and the event happen. We will include all the information that I would go through now in the post-event email so we can get right to the good stuff. Yeah? Okay. So without further ado, I'm going to kick it over to Alex. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you all for attending this fantastic panel. Um, 
this panel. Everyone's doing introduction, but here we go. No, no, it's good. It's good. So today we're talking about how do we monitor and evaluate impact. Impact comes in many different shades, and I think that's one of the things you'll really hear from the panelists today is impact can be impact in the community, impact in the environment, um, social empowerment, social justice. So there's a number of different ways to, to think in, um, to think about impact. Um, I want to thank our sponsors. Um, so I'm Alex Wise, I'm the executive director of SEDS Finance. We're a nonprofit uh, CDFI that provides um, micro loans to refugees, immigrants, and other uh, underserved community members. Uh, Good Business Colorado as the uh, the host and the the driver of this. I know there are a bunch of individuals on the planning committee. Um, Nikki O'Neill was there. Benzel Jemerson was on the planning committee. I'm probably missing. Um, Dave? Yes, thank you, was on the planning committee, so thank you to all of those individuals. Um, I think why don't just in kind of the, the interest of time, should we kind of just open it up to, not open it up to, but start with um, the introduction of all the panelists. And I think there are a couple of remarks and or slides that those individuals were going to present. I just realized I need to talk even slower. I don't know for the IT, is there one slide that you want to go first? Or should we could just maybe go from left to right with um, introductions on who you are and what your organization is? Hi, uh, I'm Cynthia. I'm the marketing manager at Yellow Dog. Um, we do commercial print and design work uh, here locally in, in Denver, and um, our doors have been open, at least for print, for over 15 years. So what's really great about Yellow Dog is so many people have come across us in that span of time, and we just have this really kind of sweetheart reputation in the Denver community, in like the Denver business community. Um, and a big part of that, it's, it's very much by design too, and a big part of that is the way that um, having a community impact is just part of our mission. It's built into the business um, as what we do. So um, whether it's a nonprofit or a, you know, a small um, local business like us, um, that's, that's who we serve. And that's kind of how we're known in the community. Awesome. So my name is Raina Oliker, as I mentioned before. I'm the administrator for the Colorado Green Business Network. Um, we are a team of specialists who are really passionate about being able to support small and large businesses in implementing sustainability into daily operations and overall, overall reduce resource use in Colorado. Um, so I do have a couple of slides for you just to, to tell you a little bit about the program that I can kind of whiz through here. Um, so our program is kind of this dual, um, two-pronged approach to support. So we do provide technical assistance to businesses. So businesses that are just starting out with sustainability, we do on-site assessments, opportunity assessments, and we provide coaching for businesses that are kind of looking for what opportunities exist to save money, save energy, water, waste, uh, fuel use, all of the above. And then for businesses that have implemented some of those product products, we provide um, recognition for businesses. So we do a silver, bronze, silver, gold level recognition. Our application is online. Um, and we can go to the next slide here. Some of the benefits of support with us, we do have a monthly newsletter that we send out, which has lots of information about upcoming grant opportunities, funding resources, um, organizations and workshops like this one. And we also provide those opportunity assessments, like I said. So if a business is trying to figure out what they can do, um, we can come out and do assessments. And we look at heating, we look at cooling, we look at insulation, we look at all of those different pieces to see where are those quick saving opportunities for a business to be able to save money, get situated and tracking their energy use and resource use so that then they can apply for recognition um, for programs. So the next slide. 
Um, this is kind of what the opportunity assessment looks like. We have a pre-visit meeting with businesses where we talk about what your goals are and what you're really hoping to accomplish. And then we tailor that on-site time to your goals and to your kind of trouble areas, right? If heating in your space is a really difficult piece, then that's what we spend a lot of our time talking on. Um, so it's a really tailored approach. And then you get this full report that you can use as a reference for the resources, for next steps, um, for however you want to implement. Next slide. Cool. So in terms of benefits of recognition, we do all the kind of standard stuff. We give you a window decal. Um, we have a signed certificate from the governor. We have a recognition event every year. Um, but I would say the biggest um, aspect, of the be biggest benefit that our businesses see is being connected to a community of like-minded businesses, right? Like Cynthia was saying, it, it's really helpful to kind of have that reputation in the community, to be able to work with other businesses that are doing this work and to kind of compare notes, right? So that if you're wanting to focus on waste and you don't know where to start, we probably have a business that's done that recently and that we can connect you with so that you can trade stories um, and share information. So we provide that coaching and we're not the only resource that we have available. A lot of our businesses really love to mentor each other and work with each other. And I think that's a big benefit that we have is just the community that you get connected to. Next slide. Um, we also do, like I said, provide statewide recognition and we also provide that third party certification, right? So a lot of uh, customers more and more are saying, cool, it's great that you are saying you're a green business, but what does that actually mean and what are you actually doing and how do you prove it, right? So we are that third party certification program that can provide you with not just the tools to track and the tools to be able to tell your story, but also with that kind of verification body that can say, we've actually been on site with this business, we've worked with them and we do know that what they do is valid, right? We also provide letters of recommendation for our members for grants. So we, we back you up with uh, grant funding opportunities as well. Next slide. Um, this is just an image of our interface as well as a QR code so that if you do want to sign up, you can, it's easy access. Um, but our interface, Green Biz Tracker is a web-based interface. It's where you can sign up for technical assistance. It's also where you can fill out the application for recognition. If you feel like you've already done some work and wanna be recognized for it, it's all right there. Um, next slide, and I will talk slower. I am a fast talker. <laughs> Um, and then I also just want to invite everybody to our recognition event. It's a really good opportunity, I think, to learn more about our program and to actually meet some of our businesses. Also, some of our businesses are represented in the room, um, so you can meet them here too. Um, but feel free to attend the recognition event. It's a free outdoor event. Um, our members will be there. We'll also have tons of partner organizations, financing organizations, other support organizations there. Um, so it's just a good opportunity to get connected with the community and to learn more about the program. And that is at the end of this month, September, and it's in Glendale. So I think that's the last one. And I can pass it up. Um, hello, again, my name is Danielle Henderson. I'm not a big speaker, so I wrote like a speech, so y'all, <laughs> you have to bear with me. I'm more of an executor than the speech. I might have a team for that <laughs> part. Um, so again, my name is Danielle Henderson. I'm the founder and current CEO of Dream Energy Solutions. Um, we are coming into a new era of energy, of, I'm sorry, of technology, where we create where we can create energy from UV rays from the sun and re reproduce the same energy that fossil fuels use. We may be a company for renewable energy, but that's not the only thing we push. Um, as, a, as right now, our concern, we are here to change the world. Here's a little information about myself, uh, my background. Um, I was actually came from the real estate business. I was in the mortgage business for 15 years. Um, I seen everything, <laughs> I've seen everything. And um, I wanna say when the market crashed in 2008, it really hurt my heart um, because we put a lot of minorities in bad loans and um, a lot of people lost their homes. And so it really didn't matter to the banks. <laughs> I mean, it was just like, get everybody in a loan, get everybody in a loan. And it just, I mean, for us, we were like, you know, let's get people to this American dream of home ownership. Um, a lot of people don't own their homes, they still rent. And so um, I did that for a long time. And then one day I just said, you know what? I can't do this anymore because um, I watched. 
thousands of people to lose their homes. I lost two homes myself um, doing that stated state alone. You know, I worked for the bank and I was naive too because the bank was telling me like, oh yeah, everything's gonna be okay, you know? Sure, first people worked at McDonald's and we stated that they made $100,000 a year so that they can get into these brand new homes. Nobody said anything. I mean, it was just, it was really crazy. Um, so I left the banking business in 2014. Uh, right now I am a multi-business owner. I'm on a catering company, my solar company. Um, I do credit repair. Um, I also um, consult on home loans um, just for to help people now, just to make sure that they don't get screwed. Um, so with that, Dream Solar was birthed. <laughs> so um, I wanted to change things. Um, I moved to Phoenix, Arizona. I worked for a solar company um, as a finance director and I watched them doing the same thing that I just came out of. And so I was like, you know what? I can do this better. And it's not a lot of us minorities in the business. I'm one of the only African-American women as an owner in this side of the business. And so we jumped in head first. Um, I cashed in all my 401ks, said, we're gonna make this happen. Uh, my husband, who was the CEO of my company, um, he's actually a certified mechanic and I made him go to solar school um, so that he can be my installer. Um, he's right now like our chief engineer. Um, he's NAPSAP certified. And so as of today, right now, we've done over 500 installs. Um, so, and we have changed a lot of things for the community. Um, we've partnered with DPS where we do educational programs to teach high school kids um, about all the trades because everyone's not gonna go to college. So there's a bunch of trades in the renewable energy section. Um, electrician, installer, I mean, carpentry. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Um, I sit on the board for COSA, which is based here out of Colorado. Um, they pretty much go to Washington DC and fight to make sure that we can push green, to be green, go green, do everything. Um, right now we are working really hard with um, minority solar farm owners, well, farm owners, um, in the South. Um, a lot of them have a bunch of land and they could make a ton of money instead of sitting on the land. I mean, right now you can sell all this energy back to the electric company um, because a lot of them grids are like collapsing left and right. I don't know if you see what happened in Texas, went crazy. California always has rolling blackouts. Um, just it's too many people. They didn't expect us to be using all this electricity. Um, so that is a big thing for us. Um, the education part is a big thing. Um, we also here in Colorado give out free projects to the lower income communities for minorities. Um, and that's huge for us. Um, we pick a, uh, last year we picked a homeowner and a small business and gave them free solar. And so just to help their business. Um, right now we're working with a lot of dairy farmers. Um, I don't know if people know, dairy farmers pay $100,000 a month and electricity. So, I mean, think about that. That takes a lot from your profit, especially with the way today is. Um, with inflation, it's, I mean, it's just, it's crazy right now. Um, so we're just here to do everything and we want to do everything. I mean, we're not just your sell you solar. We're, I mean, we're not. And I literally, we hold people's hand from the beginning to the end. Um, our comparable companies are like Sunrun, which are the big guys. And I can honestly say, they, you will never ever talk to a CEO. I have talked to every one of my customers, which is crazy. And I didn't even sell the deal. <laughs> but I, oh, I mean, we are such a family oriented business. I mean, my, my kids are involved. Um, my son is real big on our technology side. We have cool apps that are coming out that, I mean, so we are, we're just here to do something different. And I really want to bring something back to our minority communities and especially our lower income communities and the kids. The kids is a big thing for me. Um, change, their, change their lives. Um, like I was telling Alex the other day, my electrician makes a million a year and he doesn't even touch anything. <laughs> he literally, we do all the work. He doesn't even touch anything. But think about if you took an 18 year old kid who has no clue right now, put him in an apprenticeship, by the time he's 24, 25, he would be a master and he would be making crazy money. 
instead of working at McDonald's. So that's our big thing is just push, push, push and changing the world. Thank you so much. <laughs> Danielle's a, Danielle's a tough act to follow. Um, <laughs> I mentioned that uh, my name is David Shapiro. I work at the Colorado School of Public Health uh, at a center called the Center for Health, Work, and Environment. And what I want to talk to you a little bit today about, there's already been some mention. I know everyone is very dedicated to their community, whether that be your community of customers, um, the community that you work in, um, the environment, you know. What we really work with organizations on is how to assess and enhance the health and safety and well-being of your workforce, which is another really important community and one you actually have quite a bit of control over uh, in terms of how you operate and what sort of policies, programs, and practices you offer that can really impact the overall health, safety, and well-being of the people that work for you and work with you. And uh, our center, the, the, the Center for Health, Work, and Environment, is one of 10 centers of excellence for total worker health. And I think if there's one concept for people to take away from um, this introduction is uh, looking up the concept of total worker health. It's a registered term from the CDC, from the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, NIOSH. And total worker health in a nutshell is when employees feel safe at work. Thank you. When employees feel safe at work, I'm not going to ever be able to turn off my East Coast roots in terms of the, the <laughs> tone of <laughs> When employees feel safe at work, they're healthier overall in their life. And when employees come to work healthy, they're safer on the job, less accidents and injuries. And so the core of what total worker health is and means is when you look at and evaluate the safety on the job, as well as the health and well being of your team members, you have a more productive workforce. And most likely you are better service to your clients, your customers and your community. So uh, in general, uh, I want you to think of the people you work with as a community and we'll be talking about how to potentially take care of their health, safety and well-being. Green light. This green light, gotta hold it so it turns green. Right. <laughs> yeah, he, he gave us instructions. <laughs> yeah. So I think what, what we've kind of heard is that impact takes on many different forms and it can have these ripple effects in the community. Um, I think one of the things that, so I, I work for a nonprofit and everything's impact. Um, but I, I think, you know, from, from businesses, you know, there's kind of this interesting um, intersection where as a nonprofit director, <laughs> Everything we're doing is about impact, where you guys have two bottom lines you're, you're kind of managing. You're definitely looking at the business bottom line, as well as juggling that, that impact. So I'm going to start with you, Cynthia, of just what's your biggest accomplishment um, of, the, of, of the impact work that you're doing for the, the local community? Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, um, I would say our biggest accomplishments this past year have been um, to gain some recognition um, through some of these uh, certification plat uh, platforms that we'll be talking about. So um, we did the steps to um, document our work in the community and then apply for these certifications. And now we are Colorado uh, Green Business Network certified at the silver level, which is very exciting <laughs> for us. Um, and we're also certifiably Green Denver certified. Um, and we are on track for, um, this is a big, more aspirational one, uh, a little farther down on the roadmap, but we are working towards B Corp certification, which is a really big, intensive one um, that's, that's a little bit longer of an application process than the, uh, the, the more local ones uh, that I uh, mentioned. So I think those three would be our, our biggest <coughs> wins lately. Great. And then same question to you, Danielle. Um, what, what are you most proud of? You've done a, a huge amount of work in the community. What, what are you most proud of? With um, I think what I'm most proud of is just the recognition. I've been nominated for uh, an award I didn't win, but I was excited because <laughs> it was my first year in business and somebody nominated me. So it was just like, oh my God, I'm really doing something. So that was big. Um, 
that was, um, I got certified to be WMBE. Uh, we're moving on to become a DBE. So that's huge for us. And um, I think just a lot of the multiple businesses now coming to the small guy um, and saying, hey, let's join in and let's create something crazy. I think right now, one of the projects that we have um, that we just partnered with that is going to be outrageous. I think that's going to be one of the best things that I'm going to be super proud of. Um, we have a business that we've partnered with where they're going to build hemp homes. We're going to put solar on top of them. And it, that is going to be a total green home. I love that. That's, that's going to be so great. Cool. Would you talk about what MWBE means? Like what that stands for business? So DBE, just for people who can't remember. Uh -huh. I'm a, so I'm a woman minority business enterprise. Um, it's pretty much a government uh, government certification. Um, DBE is pretty much the same thing. Um, I just, um, for me, it's great for government contracts. Um, we've, I've been to a lot of meetings for DIN 10, which is for DIA here. Um, you have to have one of those certifications to get a contract with them. So um, we have to jump through a lot of hoops. I mean, to be honest, it's a lot of hoops to get it. Um, I had to prove that my mother is black, you know, <laughs> like to be honest, my father is, I mean, it's like, do you not see me? Um, but, it, <laughs> but, um, but I, I mean, I had to, we had to pull birth certificates, death certificates. Um, it's a process, but um, it's great to have um, because I can take it anywhere. And um, I met a lady out of Louisiana who has owned a electrical supply company for 30 years. And she has one too. And she does everything for the colleges. Mm. She wouldn't be able to do that without her certification. So it's it's a big thing. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and then Raina and David, as you guys um, may have noticed in the introduction, are both from business support organizations that help you get various certifications. So Raina, can you talk to us about how do people get started in, in achieving the Colorado Green Business Initiative certifications? Yeah, so I think the biggest thing is this. Yeah, we're working. Oh, give me oh. one second. Can you can you hear now? No. Can you hear me? Oh, we can't. No, we can't hear you. <laughs> oh, but we might not be supposed to hear you in the room. So fix that. Uh, while we're doing this. Danielle, when we spoke, this is who I thought of, one of our clients, <laughs> Hempway Foods. I just so we've <laughs> actually funded a business that uh, takes hemp and makes it uh, edible. And I've actually had some of her tacos and they're quite lovely. Mm -hmm. So you can eat hemp <laughs> and build a home out of it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It shocked me. I mean, the guy, he shocked me. I was like, what? And uh, we went to Louisiana and just to see, I mean, their hip farm, you know, of what they're growing and, um, um, it's kind of crazy because it's the way he's doing it. It's um, he's manufacturing. It's a block. So like a brick, mm -hmm. but it's out of him. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he's, he's going to build 400 homes. So like a whole community and put solar on them, sell it as like one package and your total green <laughs> home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we think that it's okay, but we're not 100% sure. Want to take us away? away? Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think one of the biggest challenges, especially with small businesses, is that usually the there's there's some kind of powerhouse in the business, right, who's pushing and who's doing this work. And it can be hard to stop and write things down. It can be hard to track. It can be hard to, oh, it can be hard to, um, you know, document processes, right? And when you have three employees, it might feel like, well, why would we document that process? Everybody's on this page, right? But the challenge can be, you know, if you're out of office, right? How does your staff know what, what they should be buying if you don't have a sustainable purchasing plan? How does your staff know what type of contracts they should be creating if you don't have a written statement about incorporating diversity into contracts? Absolutely. So it can be really important to start documenting those values and putting them down on paper at the same time, tracking resource use, right? So tracking the effort that you're putting in. If you're putting time into a process, you wanna have it on paper somewhere, 
right? So that as you do make changes and make progress, you can go back and you can tell that story of the time that you've spent, right? In the same way, if you replace all the lights in your facility, you want to be able to say, we're saving $100 a month because we know what we were paying before and now we know what we're paying after. So I think the biggest thing that a small organization can do is to start organizing and documenting the effort and the time that they're spending so that they can tell that story and they can be prepared for the types of certification that folks are talking about up here. Because that certification is what businesses are looking for. It's what large businesses are looking for when they're doing contracting. It's what customers are looking for. And a lot of those certification programs also reading through the application will give you ideas for what next steps you should take, right? Because if there's something on that list and you're like, oh, we're, we've never even thought about doing that before. Great. Now you have a to-do list. Right, and so it's it's also it showcases best practices that other people are engaging in to help you get a feel for where you could be putting time. Yeah. Same question. For you. Sure. David. <laughs> yes. Oh, Hello? you can hear me now. Sorry. I yes. You. Thank you. Good job, everybody. So I believe that that microphone that you guys have, that one and the one that Alex has. Those are not working. I can hear you from whatever is in front of Alex. Danielle. Yeah, and, and Cynthia. So when Alex is asking the questions all the way there, I can hear it, so I can interpret. So mm -hmm. Alex, if that microphone is not working, do you mind just coming close to the rest of your panelists so that I can yeah. hear and that everybody on Zoom can hear? Thank you so much, everybody. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk into the owl. Hopefully, can everybody hear me? I'm not gonna use the microphone. Um, I really I really appreciate Reina uh, what you said about documentation because I think uh, what what I should have mentioned is the HelpLinks program does also have a certification and recognition program where you can get certified or recognized as a healthy certified workplace. Um, we have about 200 businesses in Colorado that have the certification. Since our inception in 2013, we've certified approximately about a thousand employers, primarily in Colorado, but we've had projects, pilot projects in 11 other states as well. And a lot of organizations when they, uh, especially small businesses, when they come to me, they say, um, we wanna survey our employees to find out what their needs are. And um, that is really important. And a lot of companies are doing that to discern, discern employee engagement, employee morale. Do the people like working at your place of work? Do they um, feel supported by their supervisors? Would they recommend your company to their colleagues or to their peers? Those are sort of, um, sort of hallmark questions of an employee survey. Our recommendation is to take a step back from that and first look at what sort of policies and programs you have in place. Are we offering um, healthcare insurance to our employees? Yes or no. And does the healthcare insurance we're offering meet the needs of the people that are on our staff? Does it cover mental health appointments to the same uh, ability that it covers physical health ones? And a, a few other parameters. Um, hopefully there's not workplace uh, work, workers' compensation injuries and accidents or claims against those, but if we've had one or if we've traditionally had specific issues, um, what, what do those claims mean to our business and how are they impacting the health, safety, and well-being of our team members? So while it's important to query and survey your, your staff of three or maybe even check in with yourself or your staff of, in the case of Alpine Bank, several hundred or more employees, that's really important to get a pulse of what's going on. Before that, perhaps, is to take a survey or an evaluation of what you're doing, mm -hmm. what policies, programs you have in place, where there's opportunities for um, improvement or enhancement. And that's what our program sort of focuses on first. So we have a 35 question survey that's filled out online um, that it has six benchmarks about total worker health on it with questions about things like what sorts of policies and programs do you have in place? Do you have a tobacco-free policy in your workplace, right? What does that look like? And so there's questions like that on it. You get a score uh, and that recognizes you as a certified healthy workplace. And then some companies wanna work with us to do the employee surveying. Um, but for us, that's step two. 
Um, so the first one is taking sort of a, a holistic <coughs> look at documenting your business and what you're doing there. Uh, and it works for employers really of any size. Uh, primarily, we work with employers at about eight to 10 employees and more, although we've worked with companies as small as three or four employees also. Um, and then once you've gotten the organizational data, then you can start to dive a little bit more deeply into the needs and interests of your team members. The last thing I'll mention is we often find with that survey that whatever benefits and programs you're offering that you've dedicated your limited amount of resources to are not being utilized by the people who work for you. Yeah. And so, you know, let's take a strategic look at what policies and programs you have in place. And if nobody's using them, are they the right ones? Are they not being communicated about effectively? So that's another aspect of our, um, of, of our certification is recognizing uh, how to get people to engage and utilize the benefits that you're offering. Yeah. Awesome. And, and just to add to that, I mean, it, and it is a justice issue, right? Because if no one is taking advantage of the benefits that you're offering because they aren't documented, because a new employee starts and is like, I don't think they have that policy, right? Because mm -hmm. they, where would they find it? Then, then there is inequity in the way that employees are being served, right? So it's important, the documentation is important and the communication is important to make sure that everybody who starts on your team starts on the same page about what is offered and what is available to them so that they have the opportunity to take advantage of those programs. Thank you. In the interests of time, kind of, Little, a little personal <laughs> moderation. We're talkers. <laughs> um, in the interest of time, I wanted to open up to Q and A. Benzo, and I'll repeat your question. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see if the owl catches it. Uh, <laughs> so Benzo Jimerson, uh, CBO uh, for Metro D. Um, I, I'm interested or curious to kind of hear from from certainly the panel, um, and, and I think very specifically David and the stage. Raina. Raina. Thank you. Um, you know, you all are talking about documenting, you know, steps, taking surveys three to four as small as, but typically eight to 10, right, employees, um, and then taking the time to be able to do these things that are incredibly important. Thank you for sharing, right? Uh, and when I think about the business owners that we work with on a day to day basis, they have maybe one or two, maybe three employees, right? They are, you know, they have to 1099 a lot of people. Mm -hmm. They have to go so hard because the access to capital or the access to setting up their business in a way <coughs> that allows them to access capital, they're moving so fast in the survival way, right? How do those businesses access, right? The information or, you know, is there a support system or is there anything in the way of helping to get to some of those places mm -hmm. and get to some of those resources that are incredibly important for those that are on their way to being an eight to 10 person or 50 or 100 person business? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, so, so that's something that we spent a lot of time talking about in our program as we, oh, yeah. Um, so, uh, <laughs> um, the question was for a small growing organization that wants to become a bigger, more powerful organization, how do you access resources to kind of carry you on that journey to get these certifications or to check in on your employee right. well if well, you're being. if you're struggling with time you're struggling with exactly. resources mm -hmm. totally yeah it's a it's a really important question and i think a big part of it for us is that we we didn't want to lock all of our benefits behind recognition right so a lot of the benefits that our program provides we provide just like go on create an account in green Biz tracker we provide all those resources our technical assistance free epa funded everything that we provide is free and epa funded and we do that in order to limit those barriers for businesses to work with us you don't have to get recognized before we provide support right and some of that support looks like templates for tracking right information on how to you know work with excel to get 48 months of your billing data if you've never tracked that before in your life right so so we provide a lot of those resources through technical assistance um the other piece is that newsletter right so that because i i think 
as as a state entity, I will say, like, I think state and federal grants are horrible at telling people about them, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and you know, our program is horrible at advertising. So um, really, you wouldn't know, right? You don't know that there's a grant program available. Um, for EV charging stations, or you you probably don't know, right? Like that Excel will literally replace all of your light bulbs for free if you're in Excel territory. Like no money down, no nothing. Excel will just come in and do a lighting replacement for you, which will save money, right? But those are the kinds of things that a small business owner doesn't have the time to look in a million places for that information. So it, it sounds weird to advertise a newsletter as like a big benefit, <laughs> but we collect all that information and put it in one place um, so that, that you can read through the newsletter and be like, oh, I didn't know Excel had new rebates out. I'll have to take a look at that, right? So, so we are trying to streamline those communications to make it faster. Um, but you know, the reality is, is I do think there is time that has to be spent to sit down, right? Because you know, Excel's program requires you to email somebody and set up a time and set up an appointment, right? So there, there's always going to be, I think, a time requirement there. Um, but we have tried to make that as easy as possible. And our real goal is to kind of be the surrogate sustainability specialist for you, right? Because like, you don't have the time or money to either become or pay a sustainability person to tell you what to do. So that's kind of the point of our technical assistance is that we come into your facility and we'll say, you know what, your walls are like not insulated properly. You're probably spending a ton of money on heating in the space. That would be the step one is how can we divide up the space, make it easier for you to heat, you can save some money there, right? So that's really what we're looking at when we do on-site assessments and those are all free. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll also echo that. Um, thanks for the question, Benzo. We have a online resource center as well that's curated based on uh, total worker health needs. So if you needed a sample safety policy for a small business, we have that available that you could download template and put into your employee handbook. So there's a number of like no cost or free rate resources out there. A step back from that, I think what we've heard from a lot of small business owners, especially over the last few years is, um, how and where can you focus on your own self-care, right? Because you talked about running around and hustling and uh, all this work that needs to be done and how stressful that is. And that's probably the case for most small business owners as well. And so where do you take a step back and say, how is my own stress level impacting the one or other two people I work with? And how am I showing up each day as a business owner? And so even sort of that sort of reflection of where are your self-care opportunities? Um, OSHA has some, um, some guidelines about working alone and traveling alone. That's another area that a lot of organizations don't think about. How to stay safe when you're traveling alone with a motor vehicle or in flights. Um, there are business protections in place and things that employers of one should be thinking about in terms of traveling uh, alone and working alone safely. Um, and so, yeah, I think there's a number of things you can do before going through the 35 question survey. Um, we also make advising available at no charge um, just to talk to people about where they're at. And maybe the, the as far as we go is sending you the resources that are most appropriate to you. The last thing I want to mention for a, a lot of companies of this small size is they get into this process of writing an employee growing size. That's right. <laughs> Opportune, opportunity size um, is they get into this um, activity of meeting or writing an employee handbook. And that becomes very central to what they do. And they download a template. They change a few words, print it off. And they're like, I got an employee handbook. Our recommendation <laughs> is maybe to look at it a little bit more deeply than that, even if it takes you three years, we've worked with some organizations that have taken them three to five years to fully publish their handbook. But if you're gonna put a policy in place, um, how do you live up to it? How does it match your core values as an organization? But why just template something, you know, I understand for the sake of maybe getting a certain certification you may need to do it, but our recommendation is to be more intentional about it and to really focus on those policies as part of who you are as a business owner and how you wanna be with the people you work with. And if I could just chime in, because I am a business owner, and I'll be, I'm be honest, you definitely need self-care. <laughs> I cried the first two years. I mean, like, every day. And I'm, like, a walking time bomb, okay? I'm like, one thing, boom! Um, I mean, I just, and even with having things, like, written down, um, I get this all the time. Like, it's all in my head, but everybody can't read my mind. <laughs> and so I think um, it's just always been a lot of pressure because for me, um, it's not just about 
owning the business, running the business, I'm trying to create generational wealth Mm -hmm. for not only myself, for my employees, you know, I mean, we are trying to do a lot of things and we haven't got to the stage where I can even offer benefits. I I mean, I give a kickback, um, we're 1099, um, just because it's so much extra cost and paperwork. And and so, I mean, we're trying to roll over into that status, Mm -hmm. but um, I definitely agree it needs to be organized on paper and self-care is a huge, huge thing. Um, you have to take care of yourself and you have to take care of your employees. I think that's also where we consider ourselves a family. I mean, all of us that work for me, we all know each other. I mean, we all talk about our kids and what's going on in our personal lives, which is kind of crazy, you know, kind of crosses the lines, but it's because we care so much. If I have someone, an installer who is having a horrible day and then I'm asking him to get up on a roof, oh my God, that's a lawsuit happening because (laughs) that's workman's comp all day. I mean, he could literally hurt himself. So like, come and talk to me and and tell me what's going on. I think that's a nice way to talk about what David's doing, Mm -hmm. that a a mental thing can have real serious physical consequences. We're going to pause really quick, just in the interest of time. Um, I'm going to bring up our fearless leader, uh, Deborah Brown from Good Business Colorado. Um, when she makes some kind of closing remarks, if people want to stay around, we can do a couple more questions. I know I have one question that's come in from online. Okay, talk yeah. To the owl. Uh, talk to the owl. So like this, this whole event is very indicative of this series, right? We are all about good businesses that are doing their darndest to do better, better for the environment, better for their employees, better for the community, better for themselves. And so we are really grateful for our partners We are gonna, we wanna have, make sure everyone has time to get some knowledge from this incredible panel. So like Alex said, we're gonna do back to Q&A, but I should at least introduce myself, our incredible members that help get this uh, event going. So um, I'm Deborah with Good Business Colorado, and this is one of a 10 part series. This is the sixth event. We have four more in your packets and online. If you register via Eventbrite, or if you sign in when you came in, you'll get information an email after this event that has information on the past events and resources and recordings and the upcoming events. Um, We literally would not be here without our sponsors of the series. So I've got to give a shout out to Bank of America, Alpine Bank, Park Thrift Stores, Cigna, Colorado Health Foundation, the Colorado Women's Leadership Circle of Influence and Delta Dental, and our incredible planning committee, uh, Mickey and Alex here at SEDS have done a tremendous amount of work on this uh, be Civic, Energize Colorado, Metro Deep, and Social Venture Partners. And we're going to give everybody a chance to just give a quick shout out about what they do. Um, and then there's 35 other organizations across the state <coughs> that live and breathe to serve business owners, to make sure that you are successful in everything you do. And um, we will send you the list of all these organizations. We really encourage you to check them out, find out what resources they have. I think it's a really great point. People are so busy, right? We have so much on our plate as business owners, but there is a really robust ecosystem of organizations that are here to support you and to see you succeed in everything from taking care of your employees, taking care of yourself to the environment. So please keep an eye out for that email. Um, Also, we are going to put an evaluation in the chat and already did, Jason. Thank you, Jason. Jason, the guy with three computers. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Membership and communications. It's like every one of these is a new challenge with new technology. And um, Andres, our director of organizing, is here as well. Um, he's going to share some, uh, some quick announcements too. And then we'll get back to some more Q&A. We hope you can stick around. If you're here, grab more food. We have tons of it. If you're on Zoom and can stick around, I think we, uh, we will get back to questions just momentarily. Yeah. All right. To the owl, I heard. To the owl. To the owl. Hello. Um, So yes, as we mentioned, there is a survey link that is uh, posted in the chat for those of us who are participating via Zoom. Um, For those who are here in person, that same survey is printed out and it's inside of your um, participant folder. Uh, So please, please take some time. It should take about two minutes or so to fill it out. Um, But because we are a member-led organization, um, we design the series, we design all of our outreach, all of the materials based on the feedback we get from our members and people that come here. So if you love what you saw, let us know. If you wanted to see something different, let us know. Um, and we'd be more than happy to accommodate, adapt, and adjust um, based on the needs of the people who use our services. 
Um, if you found value in today's event, we also hope you'll consider making a donation um, to support the Lunch and Learn series, um, because you will also find information on how to do that in your um, packets that were uh, placed on all of the chairs here. And uh, we would like to take a minute to review all, some of the resources that are included in the packets, as well as in the online resource library for those of us joining via Zoom. Um, these resources come from a lot of our different uh, member organizations and also folks that were uh, our panelists here. Um, so they include both the lunch and learn schedule. Um, they have the physical locations and of course, all of them are hybrid. So if you can't go to Sterling, for example, you can always just log in <coughs> and go online. Um, you can also register on Eventbrite and we'll have a recording of all of the sessions. So if there's a session you want to hear um, that we couldn't attend, we can provide that recording for you. Um, the resources as well include a tools and tactics to evaluate your business impact resource list uh, and information about the Healthy Families and Workplace Act, as well as paid family and medical leave program. We also have one pagers from several <coughs> different organizations, um, including uh, Metro Deep, Energize Colorado, Social Venture Partners Denver, um, and then there are also going to be resources available online. Um, specifically for the Be Local Colorado Bold event on September 29th. All right, without further ado, that's back to our Q&A. <laughs> Um, and so, like we said, this was a real uh, collaborative effort. We have a lot of really great partner organizations that help make this possible. There are also tremendous resources for businesses. So we just want to give them a quick opportunity to share their organization, what they do, and how you can utilize their services. And let's go in alphabetical order. Um, is Jess online? Is Jess with BCivic online? We can, let's go, Kamiya, energize. Hi everyone, I'm Kamita Hang Snow. I'm with Energize Colorado. We are a nonprofit that supports um, small businesses, BIPOC, women, veteran, and rural with capital and programs. Um, thanks so much to our panelists for being here. And um, you can find us online. We also have a newsletter where we share a lot of opportunities, um, not only from us, um, but also from our partners throughout the state. Yeah. Thanks. And Simone and Bento, you guys. I'll be really quick because I want to hear more from this amazing panel okay. uh, for certain. But uh, <laughs> yeah. everybody knows. I started out. I started out that way. Um, <laughs> but Benzel Jimerson, the Chief Visionary Officer with Metro D, uh, really we serve in three different places: in entrepreneurial development, career and workforce, uh, and youth. Right. Uh, a lot of other things uh, uh, surround that. But the thing that I want to say inside of this space, right, to you on the panel. Uh, it's you out here is one, we have an event coming up like for November 4th and 5th, there's flyers out front um, when you walk out and then you'll see stuff on the one pager, uh, just metrodeep.com, you can find all of that stuff, uh, a economic empowerment conference, 4th and 5th, and then our gala, we'd love to see you all at February 25th um, of next year, but, uh, but beyond that is the P in our name, right? Uh, uh, Metropolitan Diversity and Economic Equity Partners is what Metro Deep actually stands for, right? But that partners part is we're an intermediary, right? They can work with small businesses, um, can work with or growing businesses and bring the resources and have those. So we're looking to collect all the resources that all of you have, right? So that we can share that with them and get them on their path faster. Really, really important to us. Please reach out to Simone at MetroDeep.com. Uh, that will connect us in that conversation. Thank you. Thank you. And Dave, are you? It was lined up. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, Dave Koken from Social Venture Partners Denver. Uh, we're a nonprofit organization here in Denver area that exists to serve other nonprofits and social mission organizations. So we really help them access expertise and resources. We do a lot of trainings. And a lot of that happens directly in collaboration with local professionals and local businesses. So if you're a growing business, a small business, business of any size that has uh, employee time, skills that you want to share back with the community, we can help you make that happen. So we design a lot of these programs in collaboration with those individuals to really make sure that local nonprofits have access to that expertise resources that they often don't otherwise. 
So come chat with us. We're happy to put together customizable programs that really get your teams engaged in the community or help to bring resources directly to you. So that's that's why we're here is also in that spirit of partnership that Benzel just mentioned. So thanks awesome. to you all. And uh, yeah, reach out, Dave at svpdenver.org. <laughs> And additional groups that made this series possible that are here to support business owners across the state. Andrea, I'm gonna do the list. Uh, the African Chamber of Commerce of Colorado, the Asian Chamber of Commerce Colorado, Be Civic, Be Local Colorado, the B-Side Fund, the Buena Vista Chamber of Commerce, Sad's Finance, Colfax Business Improvement District, the Colorado Black Chamber of Commerce, the Colorado Women's Chamber of Commerce, the Community Shares of Colorado, Denver Economic Development and Opportunity, Downtown Colorado Inc., the Downtown Development Authority of Fort Collins, Downtown Grand Junction, Entrepreneurship for All, Energized Colorado, Good Business Colorado, the Greater Pueblo Chamber, Local First, Logan County Economic Development Corporation, Metro Deep, North, North Metro Denver, SBDC, the Partnership for Community Action, Pueblo Latino Chamber of Commerce, the Regenerative Recovery Coalition at the Alliance Center, Rocky Mountain Microfinance Institute, the Salida Chamber of Commerce, Small Business Majority, Social Venture Partners, Startup Colorado, the Sustainable Living Association, American Sustainable Business Network, the Latino Chamber of Boulder County, the Commons and World Trade Center, Denver. Can we are... give Denver a <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important to call them out because literally these groups are across the state and they live to make sure that businesses can succeed. So without that, let's yeah. kick back. All right. Also, thanks to Andrea for translating that because you don't help you out at all. <laughs> A badass. <laughs> I'm going to just keep going on with Q&A until, you know, then we start thinning out. Um, a question from online from Rebecca Martin. Any thoughts about B Corp certification through the B Lab? <laughs> Cynthia, do you um, know anything about this? Uh, sure, I can take this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so B Corp is like a whole beast of a process, but don't be intimidated by it. It's actually a very friendly monster. So if you go um, <laughs> look up, I think a good place to start there is the assessment. Um, and again, it's, it's pretty overwhelming at first. It has all of these different sections. But um, I would say if you're just, you know, we call it be, be curious. If you're just in that be curious phase, you're like, well, what is this about? Is like, is there anything that I'm already doing that can count towards this? You know, just take it one little bite-sized piece at a time. Um, like for example, I have a few questions um, from that, that big application about their civic engagement and giving. And, you know, I saw these questions, I was like, Yes, this is stuff that we're already doing that they want to give us credit for. You know, it's talking about how many hours of volunteering that our employees go do every quarter. You know, we'll, we'll track our little volunteer excursions and that counts. Um, charitable giving, we do all sorts of in kind donation and sponsorship for our nonprofit customers and their different events. So cool, I could count that. So you know, instead of being like overwhelmed by this big assessment, uh, just find find the pieces that really resonate to you. And, and those are your, like, those are your footholds, right? Um, there is, I'm not as familiar with B-Lab, but there is a local um, B Corp group that will support you in this also, Be Local Colorado. They made that big long list um, and they're a group of already certified companies um, and advisors who are super enthused about um, bringing you on board and answering your questions. So use that local resource and, as well. And I believe all the resources that people have mentioned so far are included in our resource list. Yes. So I think everything that's been mentioned will, will be getting links to this. And then <clears throat> I personally have a question for you guys. As um, either if you are a business yourself or supporting businesses, how do these certifications or the the impact that you're driven to provide how does that affect your bottom line mm -hmm. oh it's a good question <laughs> well uh, i'll start if, if y'all don't mind um we generally talk a little bit more about the value on investment than we do the return on investment for being a certified healthy workplace um, how does treating your employees well 
align with your overall core values and mission. Um, so are you living up to that overall mission in terms of your health, safety, and well-being policies? So I don't, I don't normally get into sort of a bottom line <coughs> dollar for dollar. Um, if someone is you know, building a new lactation room for new moms, I don't know that we can say that that's worth X amount of dollars, but is it the right thing to do in terms of supporting your team members? Yes, it is. Um, and so uh, value on investment is important to us. And the last thing I'll mention is there, there is a, a communications opportunity. Uh, you get a badge, right? And so people put that on their signature line. They put it on their website. They put it in social media. And we know that people who are looking for new jobs in this competitive market are looking for companies that align with their own mission and vision as well and personal value. So if you can tell them you're committed to the environment or you're committed to health and well-being, um, they'll, we'll, they will look at that. Uh, and so when you are going to a attract and retain talent. Um, this is another sort of um, feather in your cap as a business, if you will. So, okay. Um, for me, for bottom line, I was broke when I started and I'm still broke. <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, to be honest with you, I haven't, um, you know, I started with my own funds. We've been working, I mean, it just turning profit over and over uh, with inflation. Materials are now even more expensive. I'm still paying uh, my employees at great living wage. So um, I haven't got any funding from anybody. Um, it's just been all us in the trenches, pretty much. Um, the one, the only funds that I've received, I won the Lowe's grant um, last year um, for being a minority owned business. That was $10,000, which was gone <laughs> the next day. Um, but I mean, that's the bottom line. Our biggest thing is um, the reason we still push is because we believe in it, we want to change the environment, change the world, and we also want to build generational wealth. And I mean, I'm not only here in Colorado, we're in Texas and New Mexico and Louisiana and Mississippi and Alabama. I mean, we opened up in the South to do, um, to help out the black farmers down there and help them build generational wealth. And so hopefully one day, you know, I'll be a one percenter. I mean, I'm pushing for it. I keep saying I'm changing the world. And um, you guys met Benzel. Benzel's like, let's make a bunch of money, then change the world, Danielle. I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah. uh, he's like, I get what you want to do and what your goal is. But I mean, at this moment, that's, that's my bottom line. I still push still every day. I mean, I, we're in the, I mean, we're in the trenches. We're in it every day. And it's just like, this is where we're at and this is where we're gonna be. I mean, to be honest, the supply chain stuff, COVID, all that really just punched you in it, <laughs> punched everybody in the face, really. So everybody's still just trying to catch up. Yeah, I could speak to the bottom line. Um, we found out pretty early on that nonprofits are some of our best customers. Like they have a lot of print and design needs, right? So, uh, you know, as the marketer of the of the company, I'm always thinking about how can we reach nonprofits um, and tell them about our services. But um, when you're doing more than just having a conversation about what can I sell you, then that really opens up a lot. You know, rather than just reaching out to nonprofits and saying what can we sell you, it's more like how can we support you? Can we volunteer for your organization? Can we support? Can we sponsor your event? Can we run a donation drive? Um, we have an ongoing nonprofit discount to lower that barrier a little bit to professional print and uh, design services. So um, once it becomes more of a conversation of like, how can we work together? How can we support you, the heavy lifters of you know, impact in our community? Um, then the sales just naturally follow. They want, they want us to succeed. They want to bring their business to us. So. Um, for, for us, it's always, always been like, you know, we support the impact makers and that's, it's been a great business move. Um, and also just, I can't say how many, in how many of our Google business reviews, people say, we found you because you're local, um, because you're out there in the community. And that's what we love about you. So that's the feedback we get all the time. People have selected us over, you know, some faceless online national brand, Vistaprint, like for that reason, they, they see us in the community and what we do, and they want to support that as well. So, yeah. Hey, I have another engagement. So I just want to make a <coughs> comment by my Timothy Floyd of Balfine Bank. In reference to MBE, MBE and WBE, quick little story. Uh, there's a, a little small company 
uh, back in the day, because I'm an old guy, I've been a banker for over 30 years, <laughs> that was very responsible for building that little airport thing we have out there. Mm -hmm. uh, that lady's now an owner of the, of the Colorado Rockies. That's Linda Rubin. Mm -hmm. So I encourage all you ladies and minorities to steer the course, stay on the course of the certification. Mm -hmm. So that's my, uh, my first story. My second thing, and my colleague, banking colleague will agree, don't wait until you need something from the bank to come talk to us bankers. Come talk to us beforehand, and we can show you how to navigate some of that stuff. That's what I just have to say. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate the you. invitation. Any other? Yes. Yeah, would you, you want mine? <laughs> Come on up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Janelle Johnson. I'm um, the founding director of a nonprofit startup called the Colorado STEM Ecosystem. Normally when you hear STEM, you think what? Science. Science, Science technology, yeah. and technology, yeah. spell out the acronym. Mm -hmm. um, but the kind of STEM that we are defining in the STEM ecosystem is um, education for students that opens up career pathways yeah. And, and gets youth, uh, gets some choices and gets them connected with workforce early on. Um, and then they, have, they can go to career, they can go to college. Um, and so if you're interested, you can join the Colorado STEM ecosystem. I, all the businesses I heard described here really fit our definition of STEM. It's, Deborah was mentioning that you all are in an ecosystem. This only places you in a larger ecosystem with schools, with out of school education providers, with funders, um, helps you tell your story um, and just be connected. Um, you can disseminate, if you have events, you can disseminate through the network too. We're just really at your service. So, um, and I, we're so new, I don't have any one pagers yet or cards, but if you mm -hmm. look up Colorado STEM ecosystem, we're housed at MSU Denver. And um, again, my name is Janelle Johnson and um, just, this is such a great network. I'm really glad to be connected with you all. I'm really impressed with what you're doing. <coughs> Good luck. Okay. Any other questions? Great. With that, that's a wrap. Thank you very much to our panelists for coming, taking your time out, talking. Yes. <laughs> talking about what you do and hopefully uh, being a little a little beacon for others to follow. <laughs> this is great. Thanks. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Please grab more food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eat the food. <laughs>